First, we measure and cut the frame. OK, do you want to measure that? Yep. The shelf moulding is really good. It's a standard material and uh, it's got a cut out, so we're going to use that to hold the blind in the frames. Our mitre saw gives a fairly clean cut, so fine sandpaper is sufficient to smooth off the rough edges. Once you finish sawing, you end up with a uh, slightly furry edge, so now's the time to take it off. When you sand it down, don't take too much off or you're going to end up with a very sloppy joint. Okay, Dean's done a really good job sanding these down. They're nice and clean and ready to join. Because we're joining them at 45 degrees, we've bought a small corner clamp to help hold them still while we drill, glue and screw them. You ready? Yep. Okay. The small corner clamp we're using makes gluing and screwing the corners really easy. They're available from most hardware stores for under $20. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay, that's the second frame. There's one more to go. They're quite simple. We're just doing the same thing and repeating it three times. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Once the frames are assembled and the glue is dry, we sand the corners. Great. So once they're all sanded and they're looking nicely finished, uh, we're going to stain them. Now, this is called Black Japan. It's a good stain. It dries very quickly, so it's easy to work with. And it's traditional, so it gives you the look you want. The black Japan stain is perfect for our Japanese screen. It dries quite quickly and is a really hard finish. It flows on easily and gives good coverage even in the first coat. It's based on traditional lacquer and has a bituminous base. Also pre-stain the 6mm Tasmanian oak beading. Yep. We then measure and mark the position of the cross pieces which will support our cane blind in the front and back of the screen panels. We score small notches with a trimming knife to allow our craft wood glue a firm bond with the timber frames. Thank you, Dean. OK, so we've marked the position of the back framing. This is the 6mm by 6mm moulding, and it's really good because you can cut it with a Stanley knife. So then we're going to place it in the frame and cut it so it's a tight fit and very accurate. The 6mm beading cuts easily with a sharp trimming knife by rolling it through the four faces. We then snap it and leave the small burr to help hold it in position until the glue dries. Now once these uh, cross pieces have dried, we've got to cut the blind. We've already cut the leading edge off this blind and before we cut it, we've got to run a bit of glue, a few dots of glue onto the string to stop it from all unfurling. We've done it on this side, so let's just mark where we're going to cut the blind there. David, if you could mark that point. Okay. These blinds are held together with string loops, so it's really important, once you've marked where to cut them, that you glue the string to the cane slat next to where you cut. This prevents the string from unravelling and helps hold the blind in place. There you go. You want to finish that off? Yep. OK, so the craft glue is great. Uh, it's important to put some down these centre frames. They help support the blind, and because we glue them, it increases the integral strength of the whole thing, which is great. So when Dean's finished doing that, we'll place the blind in position. Using craft glue, run a bead around the recessed edge and 6mm beading frames. We then cut and glue the 6mm beading around the edge and the three ribs on the front of the blind. OK, that's good. Right, so uh, we've done one panel. We now have to repeat the same process on the other two and then when the glue is completely dry, we can put the hinges on and assemble it. That's good, Dean. Yeah, it looks great. We then fit the brass hinges to our panels and the Japanese screen is finished.